Hey folks, welcome to The Mind of a Skeptical Leftist. This is the podcast where I talk to a variety of people to help spread critical thinking, progressive politics, and left-wing philosophy. I want to ha- introduce myself so that you know who you're listening to or watching. Uh, my name is Corey Johnston. I'm a laborer in rural Saskatchewan in Canada. I grew up between a family farm and a small community of about 10,000 people, and I eventually moved to a small city of about 230,000 people. Most of the people here are conservative and right-wing with many that would be considered far right. I'm different from that. I'm an anarcho-communist, an atheist, and a skeptic. This means that I try to follow ideas that are better for everyone, uh, but I also try to base those ideas on the best evidence available. As an anarchist, I believe that all people are equal and deserve to be treated as such. Uh, No one is above another, and systems that put people above each other in value are not systems that I can endorse. When you hear anarchists talk about hierarchy, this is what they mean. As a communist, I believe that everyone is entitled to a good life and all things belong to all. There is nuance to this, but above all, it entitles everyone to a safe and good life free from coercion. As an atheist, I am agnostic. It's not just that I don't believe in any god or gods, but I also believe that the claims people make about the god or gods they believe in are inconsistent and often incoherent. My anarchist tendencies mean I try not to judge others for believing things that aren't true or evidence-based, but with my mix of tendencies, I do also try to help people reach the best ideas and come to the best conclusions for everyone, rather than just supporting the status quo or being purely self-interested. I've been podcasting for almost 10 years now. I started with the atheist and skeptic communities in 2013, though I eventually moved on to more progressive communities and spaces as the toxicity and reactionary tendencies in skeptic spaces became more apparent. I do believe that a good skeptic will land on libertarian or anarchist ideals, but nobody who follows the evidence can say that capitalism is good for the world or humanity. I've only been working with video for a couple of years, and I hope that my channel can grow and build a community like some of those I've seen around other channels. However, I don't live online. I have children, a partner, a job that is demanding, and an aging parent who sometimes needs my help. This means my schedule for production is inconsistent. I hope that you will bear with me and that you enjoy my work. I have many ways that you can support this channel, and I always have other projects on the go. So look in the show notes or description box to check those out as well. My Patreon is patreon.com slash skeptical leftist, and I deeply appreciate any support you can send my way. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to contact me through any social media platform or by email at mindofaskepticalleftist at (laughs) gmail.com. All right, hi and welcome to The Mind of a Skeptical Leftist, the podcast where I talk to a variety of people to spread critical thinking, progressive politics, and left-wing philosophy. And today I'm joined by some random geek. Hello. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, it's been a while since we I had you on the show, since we chatted. Yes, back by popular demand. You have seen <laughs> some random geek last time on the like leftist unity uh, panel. Honestly, because like uh Corey was just like, Hey, some random geek. Um my friend I have a, someone on the panel and he doesn't want to be the only person that's like against left unity. Are you against left unity too? Yeah, yeah, I don't know why I did. Okay, <laughs> come on the battle. Okay, sure. And, and, <laughs> no, I did. I, I greatly enjoyed uh, that as well. And thank you, uh, Corey, for the opportunity as well. Because, like, I was actually surprised by the results. It, it's even, like, only Ben Burgess was still against Left Unity. Because Yandis was just like, I just want to, like, also work together. And we're like, no, no, we're not going to have a problem with working together. It's just, like, being a unified force and a unified thing. And it's a right. problem. It's, I was like, and I was surprised that actually Justin Clark was like, no, no, we should have, like, discussions and debates uh, ongoing us well as we try to build a new society it's like okay then yes okay thank you yes yes because like <laughs> i'm sure marxist lenders has some good ideas i just still have my criticisms so that was a lot of fun and like yes i am the es- expert of what is why an- <laughs> or capitalists or and craps are not really anarchists which to yeah. be fair, I think any good anarchist that's worse than Saul can like explain that uh, quite well uh, right and so it, yes back to talk about and craps but I'll be honest, I have not prepared uh, for or that too. However, I did listen to a uh, latest episode of uh, It's Going Down. And since it's going to be a podcast and like a latest episode, it's time recording. No, 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 I'll tell you. Oh, hold on, I have the link right away. It is the August 2nd uh, episode of It's Going Down podcast. By the way, It's Going Down. I know we're not at the like Rex and Recommend not yet, but like It's Going Down.org is a great uh, anarchist uh, collective, like a uh, news media 
organization, as it were, uh, the host of It's Going Down. I don't even know their names. They're autonomous. <laughs> and so it's just like, it's the host for It's Going Down, the co-host for It's Going Down. But no, they do. They have a, a website. They do a lot of good things. They have a shop. Then they do a lot of, like, they do a lot of, platforming of like uh, like a dishes like water protectors a lot of dishes like land defenders cool. uh, and like a ton of different things i do recommend their pockets a lot it's also great for like a political analysis too so like yeah they're talking about like um mainstream like political politics but they're very critical of the democrats as well as the like thunklicans so in in their their august 2nd episode of the podcast talks about like a michael malice a anarchist <laughs> without adjectives but as Corey's uh, laughing he's probably it's like no it's just like well he he has the adjectives he doesn't say the capitalist part but that's like, right yeah he, he, but he, <laughs> okay but i question any anarchist that goes on tim pool glenn Beck, <laughs> and 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 like he's a right winger. He's he's a reactionary pretending he's an anarchist. It, yeah, <laughs> and the, the it's going down had the uh, guest of like the YouTube chilled uh, goblin that like it, it talks about this a lot, and it's just like it, okay, cool. The, it, his book like features like Emma Goldman and other things, but then it drifts right into Mike Murray, uh, Milton Friedman, Murray Rothbard's like. Yeah, we, yeah, no, that's not how that works. <laughs> I flip into a totally different book. How the hell did that happen? And it's just like, uh, and, and, and I think, that, and, and which is kind of why, like, even though I'm invited on to talk about and craps, I have not prepared. And like, I feel like it'd it be kind of retreading uh, what was already uh, discussed on their previous show. This has been a long time, and I don't mind shit on and craps again, as it were. <laughs> uh, but like, um, the other thing that like uh, uh, Corey was inviting me on to talk about is bad leftists yes we have many bad leftists on online <laughs> Where I don't to the <laughs> yeah i'm not entirely sure like uh, i've heard often that uh in organizing circles things are different like you don't encounter the same toxic nonsense that you do online mm -hmm. and the same constant straw manning of anarchism <laughs> so yeah so uh, but I think it's especially since like um, uh, you're good and you are the one that like will invite many people on that like they are leftists of uh, many different varieties. They whether they identify yeah. as like one thing or another, and like I, no, I, I think there's some validity to that as well. Even though it's just like these democratic socialists are talking a lot about electoralism. Good on them, and if they make progress, as it were. But like I, I have my opinions. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. but being a skeptical leftist, got to listen to all kinds of leftists. Uh, right, like, and, right. As, and this is not to say that like they like what's bad leftists? Social democracy. I just have my criticisms. <laughs> It's not that their ideology is necessarily bad or that social Democrats are, are bad. Right. It's that there are bad people in those groups that are acting in bad ways. Right. Uh, but, so I, I think like how I wanted to like start is like define leftism, which is like, sure. okay, here's the thing. Leftism is not really a political ideology. And, and people have to remember right. uh, like what it means to be left and like politically. It all came from the uh, French Revolution. Uh, there was a particular, particular assembly and the people that were on the right side of the assembly were like pro the monarchy, uh, pro like authoritarianism and basically pro uh, power and wealth be like held uh, enhanced privately as were well so old people on the left were against the monarchy against the church having like authoritarian power against authoritarianism in general and wanted like a people uh, power be handed to like people elected by the people uh, democratically so generally speaking if you are on the left you're for wealth and power to be distributed uh equally uh, or equally as possible and i'm for like as most or total equity in, as possible and that sort of thing so that's how you like is that's how left and right means in like actual political theory and political discourse not in like the usa sense where it's just like right is being like want to like hurt homeless people for sport and being like <laughs> against like queer people and black people and all those things and being pro-capitalism and, and left is well being pro-capitalism but still want to like uh be at least nicer to the queer folk and the marginalized people as were it's it's, it's it, it, this was covered on a previous episode of social justice alchemy by the way hello i'm the host of social justice alchemy 
leftism defining yes. this as it's generally speaking is like is like it's a like leftist and political ideology is more as a classification of different political ideologies again i define what it is like left and right uh politically and like the, the even distribution of like wealth and power and so socialism and communism and anarchism are generally leftist ideologies so this is where like if someone says i'm a leftist i am skeptical of like what they mean by that if they, give me, if they say they're progressive, I'm still a little skeptical because I wonder what they mean by that, too. Right. Yes, because like conservatives or right wingers are generally more like uh, against progress and want to which is why they want to conserve things as it were. Or with the fascists in America and Canada, they want to regress things as they were. <laughs> yeah. Which they are <laughs> actively doing. Uh, well, it's like uh, leftists want to like progress things towards equality. So I guess like a progressive is probably a good person. But I'm curious still of like what they mean by that. Is, are they liberal or are they uh, a leftist? Which, OK, I guess like was the bad leftist. This is more just like a definitional thing. It, it bothers me because like when you say I'm a leftist, I was like, oh, good. Then you refer like the revolution to dismantle capitalism. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I, I, I just think that we should just reform capitalism. Capitalism is fine. We just got to reform it. So there's like a welfare state. I would just want like a, the, the democratic socialism, like a North model and the Sweden and Denmark is like. Right. So you're like. <laughs> the people in Sweden and Denmark are complaining about like the neoliberalism of America spreading to their countries. We're sorry. Um, it, it, UK has their hand in it too with Margaret Thatcher. Of course, uh, they, they, they should be sorry too. But we learned from them. Uh, but, but okay, but like okay, then you're not a like a leftist. You may call yourself a democrat socialist, but like you're more of a social democrat. Yes. Which is it okay, thing? Yeah, this, is a thing? Sure. <laughs> It's my problem with it is being like still thinking capital is a good thing. And that's just an ideological difference. Uh, right. And, and that's a conversation that I may have. And hopefully I can convince like uh, sock Dems or Dem socks that actually are sock Dems uh, <laughs> that like uh, 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 that now capital is not a good thing. I would like to like dismantle it like fully as possible and. Being an anarchist, I also like to like uh, dismantle the state, which upholds it. Which goes back to why and, and craps are not really anarchists right. because you need state to like uh, uh to like uh, run and uphold capitalism. Yeah, because they're still going... upholding private property. So <laughs> yes, exactly. Which again, it, private property is not like I own this. This is my thing. It's more like. I own this. You can't put a tent here or you can't like do anything with it. It's more yeah. of denying people things <laughs> than opposed to like actually owning things like, for example, like copyright and intellectual property rights in that in, in regards. Um, so uh, I, which is actually one category of bad leftists as it were, because I see this a lot online, especially of leftists that's like, are just leftists and they, they, I don't see them. They're very online. It seems, which is not in itself as a problem, as I said before, but like if, what if I've seen from online is mainly them talking about, uh, sharing around videos or sometimes even fanboying or standing over like certain left leftists on like creators as it were, especially it, it seems like it's like a click, like a high school mm -hmm. click where it's like, they want their side of lunchroom, uh, their, lunch table to have as many people as possible which is actually something that ben Burgess was like uh talking about on the left unity podcast uh, panel that uh, he is concerned about i almost said this during the panel and i was like i restrained myself but it's like he is concerned about the inadequacies about the size of the left as a movement as it were and it, it's like it's but with the online leftists which generally are the young people who came to like the left uh like early on not that long ago like because of bernie sanders or something like that right. and it, because of certain content creators taught about like leftism of like medicare for all or something like that they think themselves as leftists and again stand almost stand for the big leftist online content creator and that's their seem to be whole praxis is that right, like right. making sure that like contra points or philosophy tube or h bomb guy have as big as on and it's like i have some criticism about h bomb guy but it's mostly a personal thing to have some criticisms of like uh philosophy tubes it's mostly how the, she stands for like contra points oh boy contra points <laughs> 
I have my criticisms of contra points. Uh, so, should, should I dive into it and go into that this or, or just leave that for like the the future video when I have more things to say about? Sure. It? I, I don't, yeah. <laughs> I done three YouTube videos about contra points about like the things she's done. So like I'll just uh, point to there as it were. But okay. speaking of uh, speaking of like the bad leftists, especially leftist content creators, especially these people who are fans or stands for leftist content creators or leftists that have a history of like racist and derogatory remarks. Right. Right. Uh, there was there was a great uh, TikTok video by Francesca Lee. You know her as Francesca Lamsey. She did like decoded on MTV oh, yep, yep. in 2015. And it's how the anti-SJWs of like 2015, 2016, especially the Gamergate ones, made the alt-right pipeline mainstream as it were. Yeah. And she, they, I think she covered it quite well as how like they have, they she was one of the main targets that where they were trying to debunk her right. videos uh, while using slurs or just like derogatory comments, comments about her hair, her looks, and like, and giving it all as opinion, presented as facts, but defending that all the things that they're doing while attacking her, honestly, debunking as comedy and made a lucrative career out of it. It was a cottage industry to like, not only to Francesca Lee, but also to Anisha Arkeesian, right. to like yeah. Lacey Green for a time and, and all, and all to the bedroom feminists as well. But then I think when they realize, Oh, wait, Oh, the fascists have like gone to the power. Oh, this is bad for us. Then they just like said, Oh, wait, well, I denounce all those things. My problem with feminism was because of neoliberalism, something that Sean has actually said. Oh, is that right? And yes, she actually said that on a Vosh uh stream. Vosh, a bad leftist again. <laughs> I had to look. I have to compile the like. I, I mean, the like, bad le- b- bad Vosh takes is like a thing. <laughs> it's it, it, it's, uh, it's one thing. It, I guess I mentioned it, it's, it's one thing for him to have like bad takes and be an asshole and your bad leftist. Not a category of bad leftist, honestly. Uh, but it's another thing that for him like uh, sexually harassing like Poppy in DMs. Mm. I have the receipts for that, so it's like that's a big thing for me, and and how we react to that. I, I guess it'll be for if or for a future video or like something. Like, oh, I should make a YouTube video, not only if like all the times that like Vosh said slurs and laugh at like trans racial jokes or wish the trans people don't exist, uh, but like uh, so that's that's the short end of like why Vosh is terrible and he's still terrible now. The uh, professor Fowler's can talk about that as she has done. Yep, and, yep. Um. Is so. If, let's see, hey, so they have, uh, uh, so that's a good example of a bad leftist. The like the things that like they are left because of economics. Uh, I think I like like one of my friends just said they're like progressives, as it were, almost right. like almost yeah. like the brochless and this is when i was asking on like social media of what is like a category when you think of bad leftists when you think of oh this is a big one brochless or right. like the leftists that think that like the only war that matters is class war and it shows like and i've seen this discourse online from like other people on twitter that like listen some working class people are going to like say some like not great things about queer people about like uh black people you just got to deal with it okay <laughs> don't ask you questions about your genitals you just gotta no, deal with it. you've yeah. got to like uh, it's kind of like labor organizers like and i was like so we have to tolerate bigotry in order to for the class war it's just like it's, i think it's, yeah like I, I think that it is important that a person like recognizes that not everybody's going to be you know great all the time mm-hmm. but also you can draw lines in the sand and say hey you can't use slurs when you're at our meetings you can't say you know you can't be a transphobe at our meetings. You can't be ableist at our meetings. You know, like, yeah, okay, I understand we're working class and I want you as a comrade, but there are lines in the sand that I'm not willing to let you cross. Right. And, and, oh, God, and this, uh, there was like the, this whole thing about the cancel culture, talking about the contra points, and it's just like, hey, but, yeah. Oh, that's gonna be its own thing. I have opinions on that, uh, but like it, I can understand. I, I understand it. I understand how, and this is actually not necessarily a bad leftist thing or what bad leftists do, but a bad tendency. And I can be guilty of this as well. Like, uh, 
especially when we're like content great you know, when content creators need to put a video in the next week and so it's like oh what can i do oh the politics of like the stranger things is where it's like okay yes it's important to do, do media analysis and i understand like what is happening of what like our media is kind of like uh priming us or conditioning us to like tolerate in such a way i think that's important but yep. it's one thing to say mcu is like propaganda because like if you don't clarify it it can like leave the impression that it's like oh you're watching mcu bad you're being successful right. propaganda and it's like okay no one's immune to propaganda one thing yep. and another thing okay I like to watch. Why do we need to know about the politics of Stranger Things? It's a <laughs> Netflix show about kids in the 80s with horror monsters. I mean, I watch anime. I don't watch anime for its politics. To which when I say that out loud, a friend quickly said, John- Jonathan, I surely hope you're not watching anime for its politics. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, that can be a bad tendency for us. And, and speaking of like ableism, especially since like for many of our comrades that like have mental illnesses and it's just like, it's they They only have so many spoons in them. Like one day taking a shower can just like wipe out their spoons. And so they just want to relax. And so if they relax to a Marvel comics or a Marvel show, and the, yeah. do you have to tell them that it's a copy Canada? They can see it too. They just like, it can put it back in their mind recognize it's there but just know it's a fictional story and enjoy for like the comic book superheroes that are punching bad guys that are in a medium that's meant for eight-year-olds not necessarily that like not to diminish the stories that are meant for <laughs> eight-year-olds i love children's shows too right um and so that's one thing i you know is right it's not brought up uh, a lot or mentioned a lot because it's it's like whether intended or not, it is slightly ableist that like we have the tendency to do, and and yes, it's like, uh, do we really need to like a, do this constantly? Which is uh, one thing I think like uh, I think I see a tendency of like uh, like what leftists do, and which can be a part of like uh, a discourse to have, is content creation or like consuming content as well, praxis. Right. It's which not. Is, <laughs> yes. Exactly. <laughs> uh, it's now if 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 like uh, people are actually doing like actual labor organizing it's something that i haven't had the time to do as it were because i work six hours weeks as it were if i'm finally getting sundays off but it's just like i haven't fit in like labor organizing or working with e- even in like dsa or like iww or doing mutual aid i understand when i'm giving um just directly giving money to like Phoenix or to Joanna or to uh, Lynn Quinn and Naz, that I, like that's not really mutual aid because I'm not building like a network for people to help out those people because they live in Maryland or Indiana and Minnesota. You know, that's not to say I can't do that, but I'm just doing charity. But I like how Justin Clark clarified uh, the difference between charity of poor people giving money to each other to help each other out as opposed to Flapper 3, which is like yeah. the billionaires that like want to the systems that they benefit from to stay in place but like so to they, make themselves- yeah so they give yes. to charity and then get a tax return for it anyway <laughs> yes. but then also they can like, control and organize things like the intention of the gate foundation is something right. that like oh yeah that's like a great essay an article i should read on my channel it's like yeah no 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 it's just like the gate foundation is it for so good for you I don't think so. Yeah. Um, it, it's interesting. Like I, I sometimes, I mean, it, he's not a leftist, but why are people in power listening to this person whose specialty is computers? Like mm-hmm. he doesn't know more than anyone else about how to organize a society or how to like do uh, outreach in Africa. You know, like he mm-hmm. doesn't know how to do this stuff. He's just a rich guy. Yeah. <laughs> So it's, I mean, it's like, yes, I will listen to him about the computers. I will not agree with him about property rights. That's no. for sure. Yeah, no. Uh, is, is, and it's like, it is, but like, and, and even education as a word. Oh, okay. I can, de- no, no, I can definitely agree in more well rounded education and more sciences and maths and education. But I think there's that it should be a lot to be done about Common Core anyway. But I'm also not a teacher. So, right. It's, and I still have my criticisms about the public education system as it is in the USA, for sure, and other places. The, uh, <laughs> also known as the indoctrination system. Yes! <laughs> as, and as, uh, randomly, this was a conversation where I have in Discord. It's like, home economics. 
What is that? What's the economic parts of Home McDonald's? I just learned how to cook. I just know how to make this one meal. I don't know how to like live independently. I just took a <laughs> class in high school that was elective, not a requirement of independent living. How to put on a tie for a job and if you in like write a check and do taxes. <laughs> Still yeah, not, I, still not budgeting, not financing your household. It's still just like how to put on a tie and write a resume. <laughs> I think we, I think we learned a bit about budgeting oh, in eighth grade, but that was from a financial guy to talk about stock markets. Ah, lunch is no good. Yeah, is but yet in my social studies class, we did read like the jungle by Upson Sinclair. How the hell did I not become a socialist then? <laughs> oh right, the system like we just mentioned. Yeah. Uh, but like off a tangent, back on topic of bad leftists. Okay, yeah, I definitely mentioned the biggest already, but especially the anti SJWs of Francisco Lamsey, and which did open the door to like someone like Bosch. Well, especially like Destiny. He never said that like he was a leftist. He was always said he was a big anti capitalist. But okay, right. I, I get it. Get it. Like, Verity Speaks said that like it was that was kind of like this talks and discussions and ContraPoints videos that like de-radicalize him sure. which it was work that he did on his own okay yeah and I definitely get it of like a numbers games of like less numbers of Nazis and more numbers of not Nazis or leftists good and again back to like the size of the left and like how we can increase our numbers it's just that like any of the studio said in his like uh, how to radicalize a game you should not make de-radicalizing game your whole praxis right and even and even if we do this, and I'm guilty of this too, he has not seen uh, someone change their mind based on an argument online, on Twitter especially, yeah, and <laughs> or, or places like that. I spend a lot of time the, doing discourse and like a uh, or venting and ranting online, and but I know that I'm just venting and ranting as I'm talking politics. And maybe I'm not convincing any liberals that I'm talking to with my criticisms of the Democratic Party. And it, it, because apparently I'm a hateful and noxious person because of that. I'm sorry, the Democrats are conservatives, <laughs> and, I, and unless all of them become socialists, I don't think there would be a, like a force for greater good or yeah. great good, just marginally better. I think I think that is a consensus among most leftists, right? Is that the Democratic yeah. Party is not actually left. They're just like center, center right. And like yeah. maybe Bernie Sanders is slightly to the left. Right. <laughs> but... But yeah. that's why something that Justin Clark also mentioned on the Left Unity panel of like seeing as an Constitution Cortez, like is she like a Democrat or socialist as she claims, or is she a social democrat? I, I have to like honestly listen to her talk about capitalism to like know that distinction as it were. So it's like right now it's like one of those two. Right. But the support of like American imperialism is I uh, one of the people that brought up of like examples of bad leftists as it were. But mm. speaking mm. of supporting imperialism, yes, oh yeah, definitely that the Americas the uh, 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 USA, specifically, this America's like North, Central, and South America. I have to remember that myself. Uh, but the USA and other imperialist like uh, forces in the global North or the West or like they whatever. Yes, that's all bad and terrible. It's all like that. But we should not also like forgive or ignore or let's say no, China does nothing wrong with its imperialism or its like treatment of the Uyghur Muslims in like uh, right. in Beijing uh, or like or its treatment of like Hong Kong or like Taiwan. Uh, Hong Kong is an interesting thing in situation as well. Taiwan, but the, uh, they're being left on authoritarian rule. Uh, the, the, let's not forget of the like manufacturing there with suicide nets and so. Um, but it's like a. I that, that that sort of thing where it's just like a it's it's just a problem their problem with imperialism when it's white imperialism and, but it's okay when it's like Asian or like African imperialism and I'm just like no 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 well it's, oh. yeah it's like so many there was leftists who were supporting or were pro Russia when they started invading Ukraine and I mean you can debate NATO's influence the problems with NATO oh, yeah. one way or the other but Russia is not good. Yeah. <laughs> they're not even they're not even socialist like they're not they're just another capitalist country it's especially now uh, the, there's the argument from when they were the ussr i say sure. they are state communists or state socialists at best i'll give them that they were trying to achieve communism through the state which i have my this criticism sure. of and that sure. 180 that 180 year question of like social so see state power or dismantle state power will forever be ongoing because there will always be until no we literally change things <laughs> like, they will be arguing about this 
it, yes, it, exactly. It is like, uh, but another example of like bad leftists is not saying Marxist Lindus or Maoists as were, but those who like say like Stalin did nothing wrong or right. denied the whole dormo as were. That's the big one. I've seen it. Uh, my friend has seen it on Twitch of like big panels by big leftists that like say the whole dormo was like a CIA propaganda. Now, yes, there was CIA propaganda to try to make the USR look worse than it was. That is very true. Right. But not all of the that they said about like the USSR of how bad the USSR was or how bad song was was a lie. Or right. like yeah, propaganda. like the thing the thing with the Holodomor is that it happened and it was bad and it, it was essentially a genocide. But also <laughs> um the propaganda that Stalin literally decided to kill a hundred million people, <laughs> that's that's not that's like red scare bullshit, right? Like yeah. He did kill a lot of people, he but did, it wasn't a hundred million. No. It's like, <laughs> and, 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 and it's not communism that killed a hundred million people. It's Joseph right. Stalin. <laughs> not I mean, that he, like did. A, he didn't kill a hundred million it, people. Right, exactly. <laughs> uh, it, it, but like it, Lenin, it, even those who said Lenin did nothing wrong or Mao did nothing wrong. No, Mao did sorry for a lot of people too. Oh, and this also, I guess, like will go into tendencies, uh, tendencies again of uh, like bad leftism is, and this is something that I'm guilty of. Uh, it were and like the number of things is like it's especially when I was like a first year anarchist, and I, I one thing I thought I was like can do well enough to like talk about anarchism amongst leftists. No, no, they said that they were leftists, but it turns out they were social democrats uh, or like liberals. Or one even said to me, "There's always going to be hierarchies." Yeah, see that that's the trouble with like pro state socialists is that they're always yeah. like. They always look at the anarchist as like, oh, you're just naive. And you, well, but no, <laughs> like we <Engels>. have, <laughs> we have Engels. the world to think that, represent this. Yeah. Angles was uh, on authority is trash. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. It's like, you kill us. I'm not, it's just like, am I hearing the same argument as like a authoritarian leftist said in time times? Because when I listen to like Ingalls mentions that how like naive the anti-authoritarian leftists are and just like, I'm hearing this all the time again. On, on recommendation from a, a viewer, I'm mm-hmm. reading the book, uh, Libertarian Socialism. It's like a history of the debate between communism and li- communists and anarchists and even within anarchism, like the individualist yeah. versus the collectivist sides. Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's it's really really good. But almost everyone who isn't an anarchist strawmans the entire anarchist group as like only like and caps. Like they pretend we're all poor old private property. <laughs> like <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> Funny you mentioned that, uh, like a month ago when I was on like a, uh, hangout, uh, after we went off air, uh, a liberal asked me, uh, geek, have you watched the H? Uh, give, uh, I want you to give me an honest answer. Okay. Have you watched the HBO show? The anarchist. Oh, for I have sakes. not. And I will not. But, God damn it. <laughs> well, okay. So I done. I have no idea about that anarchist. No, no, he, that wasn't his question. It's like, he would ask about anarcho or something or another. And I was like, I don't know what that is. It was from the show, the anarchist, which a comrade was also in the call and said, Oh no, 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 no. Those were not anarchists. Okay. They're anarchists. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. That's all I need to know. Cause yeah. like the, it, I mean, speaking of like an ANCAS, yes, there were like libertarians that did like took over a city in Vermont, from what I know. Um, and it got overrun by bears. Okay. I, I'm talking about the grizzly animals because they didn't take care of the trash, not the like a big burly men that were looking for cubs. My friend, he joined the digital heretic, made that mistake. It's just like, <laughs> oh, if that, if that happened the opposite way, it were big boring men who just took over town. That would be awesome. And the libertarians don't care about that. I was just like, no, the bears were just coming over and taking the trash because no one was picking up the trash. It's just like, ah, oh, it's not my job. It's not my property. It's like, okay. It's, it's like, all it's- of our job to pick up the trash. Come on, people. <laughs> it's, right. it's, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, so I, this is also uh, uh, kind of speaking of like the USSR authoritarian like regimes of how we kind of like joke about it as it were. Um, well, OK, so I was labeled as a bad leftist or just a bad person or just an advocate for like mass murder <laughs> uh, because I 
I, I I was just shit posting, and the only reason, the only part of the meme I disagree with wasn't the kill of landlords thing. I agree with the sentiment, not necessarily the activity, because Starfleet Revolution Four Six A no uncoded messages over open channels. Um, <laughs> as and I'm not suggesting we actually do do that, correct? I, but but it's the sentiment of like we shouldn't have landlords. But it was clearly a joke in this like visual memes. Like, what's the problem of like renting apartments at like sunset sunrise like apartments? Landlords, how should we fix this solution? Kill all landlords, just as Mao taught us. That was the only part of that meme that I had a problem with. It's like, I'm not a Maoist. I agree with his sentiment of landlords, but I do not actually agree with the natural activity. We we should take away their property from them and yes. like give it back to like all the tenants, as it were. And if they refuse to, hmm, okay, that's where we have the question of like what to do in that situation, right, as right. it were. Yeah. Um. It's, but like I was like, and now the I, for further context is like, so, so I've got labeled as like advocate for mass murder for that meme that I posted because landlords for, is a group that can be mass murdered, right? <laughs> that, that's, they, that's that's like a, a marginalized group landlords right exactly <laughs> hey, i will say was not called landlords leeches because that's detrimental to leeches leeches are they good actually, <laughs> they actually serve a purpose in a natural ecosystem and they have some medical uses as well so they're more useful than natural landlords and they're natural so yeah, yeah. um is but like when at the time I was like uh, uh, labeled as an advocate for mass murder, it was because I was on a live stream again with these leftists, but they're sock dems, and I was really bad at like advocating for anarchism because the card I played and I played heavily. We need to fight a revolution. We need it now. And also, it was that. Yeah, I was actually uh, serious that like uh, how people need to be murdered in this like revolution. And I did said as many as to take with sincerity. So that was a problem. Also, the a friend of mine was watching this live stream at the time and was heavily criticizing it uh, or uh, having a lot of problems and was upset at what I did. And especially since he was right that like what I could have done is like said, I'm not well versed in this topic, but my friend in the live chat is we can find him on. Mm. And I didn't do that. So I will admit to my flaws, but uh, the, the larger flaws is the, the advocacy, not necessarily advocate of revolution. I think that's necessary, but the it's the gun holdness of violence. Right. And that's right. Good. I, I would want the revolution not be violent if possible. And I think actually more, more practical for be an uh, uprising, as you've all seen, and will happen again, as it were, because like the social inequality is happening and it's being so fast. Um, but I like. Yeah, they, like, it, it's tough because a, a revolution like is. Uh, if we if we have the revolution that I would want to envision, where we build dual power and we we yeah. build separate systems of power, uh, mm -hmm. where we don't rely on the state, they're going to crack yeah. down on those, right? And we're going to have to yes. defend ourselves and perhaps even retaliate in some way. Right. I'm not advocating for like go and kill neighbors who happen right. to be leaving that capitalism is the right way, right? We're ju we're yeah. just talking about defending ourselves against the state. Right. And, and and like and this goes into greater discourse about like the use of violence as were and like where you draw the line and like what is violence as were because I think the violence in some cases is very useful because of sabotage, for example. Right. right. Again, hey, but I almost, Canada, unless unless you're hurting people, I don't even know if that right. counts as violence, right? Like Yes. Violence against property isn't violence, is it? <laughs> Well, right. Um, so there was like, I forgot a oh man. I would really should remember this guy's name because he was essentially like shot at like the, the Northwest Detention Center in Tacoma, Washington, uh, ICE facility. And oh. he was doing he was doing sabotage as well, destroying uh, the vehicles, the transport vehicles. And yes, stopping that like uh, oppression of the people in that kind of way, preventing the deportation of those like uh, uh, ICE detainees, as it were. Or, yeah, that's like a good practice. It, yeah. it, he was going to up against the state and the state cracked on him the uh, violence as were in the normal state ways with like guns especially especially in the usa um but and so he he has like a, a memoir or a memo or something like that uh that he written and is posted up on the anarchist library but again i forgot the guy's name he's a folk singer from blake island though and like in the 60s so okay. hey that goes to show you just because someone grows older doesn't mean that they will grow more conservative as time goes on. That's right. Some of them become more radical. Yeah. It's only if you grow richer do you grow more conservative. <laughs> when you start owning property, that's when you tend to tend to 
I do know some pretty radical people who still have property from inheritances and whatnot, but. Yeah, exactly. Uh, our friend Little Arno, she happens to own one fourth of a farm that like was uh, her father's or uncle's or something like that. And yes, uh, there are tenants there. And uh, I don't know what the situation is now, but she uh, she said so she has alchemy. She only gets like 300 euros a month. So yes, she's technically a landlord, but she really wish she could give her that property or give it up to the tenants. It's just uh private property legal thing uh, right. who owns it who wants to get the it actual and- system prevents you from actually doing that <laughs> right uh yeah. i mean so this is also a, a, a long-standing like discourse as well and and again i love the good guillotine meme as oh, we yeah, were of course <laughs> As, and when the guillotines were actually physically built, like out in outside of protest during a protest at Puerto Rico for their independence, or like uh, one showing up at like the house of the mansion of Jeff Bezos in Seattle, or one showing up in the middle of the square at the uh, the, uh, at the protests of uh, for Black Lives Matters against police brutality in Detroit, or like in Guatemala, like uh, a couple of years ago when the Guatemala Congress voted to take away money from the food stamps program and give it to themselves. Right. I think I think they even burned down that building, the Congress building. Good. Now, I'm not sure. I think no one was inside <laughs> at the time. So it's just like, again, I, we talk about violence. Blowing up the police station in Minneapolis was metal as hell, and no one died in that because right. no one inside the building. Yep. And and so, again. So it's just dem- awesome. So it's just yes. awesome. <laughs> Damage property is like fine, I think, in some regards. Again, uh, throwing a brick through a Starbucks window, they have insurance, and like, okay, the people inside might be flustered, but if like the bricks, unless the bricks are being thrown directly at them, then like, no, Antifa is not a problem for throwing, throwing bricks at windows, as were. Uh, or black block, um, but like, but it's I think like something that like my friend has been telling me that like uh, the use of guillotine like in colonialist Africa by f- France as it were it's like a different symbol to some people who have been oppressed by that. And so okay, that's that's definitely something to be think about. And I agree, a guillotine is not a defensive weapon as it were. Of course, when that was said to, in a live stream, I was that it was like uh, okay, no, okay, my gamer brain is now thinking like. How do you make a guillotine a weapon like in Bloodborne? It's all like that. I'm trying to imagine that as it were. <laughs> have the guillotine on your arm and then like punch the enemy and have the guillotine come down. Okay, metal as hell, but like the point is taken. Yeah. No, uh, guillotine is not a defensive thing. Again, I'm not going to chastise anyone who shares guillotine memes. I'm good at saying guillotine memes and I enjoy them. As I it love were, a good but... head dropping gr- joke. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, what does uh, Malice has said to uh, uh, what by I said the mouse give to landlords is uh, no, I, I, I'm ruining the joke. I'm ruining the joke. I forgot <laughs> it. Okay, uh, nope, I'm ruining the joke. The board joke, uh, I have to remember it. Uh, but that left this okay. Another one, tankies. <laughs> this should be we kind of already covered some of that with the pro authoritarian type of true Stalin apologists, right. Oh yeah, yeah, they are right. Uh, so we that, uh, recovered that, and like it is something we mentioned on like the left unity panel, uh, yeah. which is why I don't think like anarchist groups are going to like um be aligned or unified with like Marxist Leninist group. Which I uh, think like some Marxist Leninist, like Joseph Clark said, is like no, no, that's fine because we can go into our own corners and like do our own things and come together at the protest for a mutual uh, cause, but then like do our own separate ways and and as so long as we're not like infecting it, yeah, the PSL can like do that kind of thing with like political you know, candidates and somewhere, and if they can get things done for that, great. Uh, mutual aid projects like Food Not Bombs can still do their own things and they can be separated and not be unified, and that's great. And all. One of the things uh, that uh, a lot of anarchists are, are really against, like the incorporating MLs into your anarchist group, is because they tend to co they believe that it they tend to co opt the anarchist mm-hmm. group and and take it over. But uh, um, I think that when you when you are ultimately working separately and then just come together for say one project or or two projects or what have you, mm-hmm. right? Then I think that you're still okay. You're not like you're not having Marxist MLs in your group, and they're not mm-hmm. having necessarily anarchists in their group. Mm-hmm. But everybody's kind of still working to the same goal, right? Right. I don't know. It's weird. 
Yeah, I mean, I again like what should show us like sees the state or not. Uh, it left unity. Mm-hmm. It was oh, it's going to be a, like a discourse that we're always going to have. There's not, never going to be an answer for it because like we all I think differently about that sort of thing. Um, you know, I will. Uh, one other thing I want to bring up about bad leftists. Now again, I was just going to say Tennessee's uh, like bad leftists as were, uh, and this is probably really controversial. Okay, yes, a cap absolutely. Cops are bastards is the <laughs> uniform itself and the institution of the police, and I have a problem with. And and I can definitely understand that, like some of my comrades have actual direct trauma uh, the, at the hands of cops, and totally understandable if you're a visually marginalized person of like being black or being queer or being homeless, as were, well, or if you have been arrested and spending time in jail, jail, which like has radicalized some people and understandable. And I can definitely see how you really, really, really have a negative opinion about cops. Right. I. It's it, it's and this might be a difference in opinion, and maybe people won't like this take as were. But like, it's one thing to say a cap, but I think it's another thing to like t- a openly celebrate uh, the deaths of cops mm. because, a- and it, that's where it's just like, and I know that like if I put it in this way. People would hate for me to say it, and I get that too because I hate it when it's like used against me for like sharing guillotine memes or like sharing a the mal meme about killing landlords i'm an advocate for mass murder uh or talk about the uh, heavy heavy violent revolution well and nothing else is that like it makes it look bad if we're celebrating the death of cops especially when is like people don't understand our position of a cab yet right right and, and it's and, but if, and i think it's just like is maybe certain tendencies it doesn't they don't care that much but for anarchists, like part of our project has to be an educational one, right? So, sure. so if we give people a bad, a bad taste in their mouth because we're celebrating the death of a cop, that mm-hmm. might limit our educational opportunities to help them mm-hmm. grow in towards our tendency. So, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm not saying I don't want to tone police either so much, right? Like, yeah, exactly. And I, I hate fucking cops too. <laughs> like. Oh, <laughs> like <laughs> If, if I, I cannot again. I can understand someone who says that, like, uh, who has a distrust of someone who doesn't celebrate the deaths of cops. But they, because if it's because of their personal experience yeah. with cops, it, as it were, and I guess that speaks to my privilege. I've never had a bad experience with cops, oh, but okay. I recognize it, I recognize that just because I never had a bad experience with cops. That again, that could easily change if I go to a Black Lives Matter protest or something like that, or, or even th- just catch a cop on the bad on a bad day when you happen to be, oh. you know, driving somewhere, like, or <laughs> try to record them, or yep. which some of them yep. are cracked down on those kind of laws, or uh, helping to protect the, like a uh, unhoused like comrades for, like it, from their stuff being taken yep. away. That could definitely put me on the bad side of the cops. Yep. So I, I will say that that like that's where I come from. I definitely have pleasant experiences with cops, but of course, just because I have pleasant experiences with like a Trump supporter. Right, right. Being one they're still wrong and mean. bad. <laughs> yes, exactly. I was just like, so what if a Trump supporter is nice to you? So they're a Trump supporter. I'm gender queer. No, you're not going to get me to like say that some Trump supporters have some good tendencies about them. I don't care if they vote for Trump or vote for a Ron DeSantis or like a the, the, the Florida gun. No, that is Ron DeSantis. Yeah, no, yeah. they're actively against like uh, LGBTQIA plus people, and that's me and my comrades. So that's the problem yeah uh so uh, 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 speaking of uh, again another bad tendency not necessarily bad leftist but i think a bad tendency which is like which goes to something that my friend was said the actually the indigenous heretic of not examining our own bigotries or our own biases as it were as like, like any leftist that like uh, still has opinions of them a black black people or think that like i can't be racist i'm a leftist as it were but yet the like or they say that like uh, trans people are subhuman mm-hmm. or yell at my friend for like criticizing them is where again, again, samples of like bad leftists that I should like put together the like, why do I do <laughs> like the Peter Coffin? Here's the Here's list. The where list. should I start? Yeah. Uh, again, a list for Peter Coffin. And yeah, that is a bad leftist for sure. There's one example. Well, of that's people have brought up. the whole patriotic socialist thing is bad. Oh, leftist, yes. Right. 
Right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like if they can even be called leftists, like it's hard to even. <laughs> Patriotic socialism. How close is that to nationalist socialism? Let's be careful about this. And again, I'm an anarchist. No nations, no borders, no fucking wealth hoarders. Yep. Uh, and maybe part of the, like a slight disagreement amongst Marxist, Leninist, and Malice is like, uh, okay, decentralized governance. Uh, so will there be borders? If there's some kind of centralized governance, but no borders, okay, so we can work on that. I'll still hold the centralized governments accountable for like their actions or inactions on things. Yeah. And I just prefer decentralized governance of more autonomy as were. Well. Uh, so yeah, again, the first opinions from between me and myself and Marxist Leninist and Maoist and other authoritarian or status uh, socialists, I should say um, is damn it. Where was I? Uh, oh, no, no, that not a bad tendency. Yes. Uh, labor organizers and union strikers are definitely like fighting for like uh, they get better pay at like an Oreo plant or in the Bisco companies and that sort of thing. Absolutely. But when not uh, analyzing their own biases, as it were, and this is something that like has to be like pointed out by like usually uh, people of color or black next people or black people or like trans and queer people, is, but especially like the uh, like next people. Do not do, do, in your rhetoric of like why Nabisco workers should strike for better pay at their jobs. You shouldn't say you shouldn't blame Mexico for taking their jobs. And this goes into like a this subtle but like still imperialism or American exceptionalism of like we should have these jobs. Mexico should not have those jobs. Right. That this this gets into like. You should have solidarity with other workers around the world. Yeah. I'm not saying I agree with third worldism, as it were, but like it, that we should all have like class solidarity. Which not saying that the, that's the only war that matters, well, and, but and like that the thing is, if you blame Mexico for the loss yeah. of jobs in America or or somewhere else, then you're not actually addressing the problem, which is that mm. capitalists are minimizing their costs by sending the jobs somewhere else. Like they're exploiting mm. workers in other countries worse than they can exploit you. So mm. it's still the capitalists that that's, that's the problem, right? <laughs> Uh, and and it, like it's not necessarily the fault of like the Mexican government nope. as well either for like jobs being going over to Mexico because of the NAFTA agreement or other or like the TPP which I think Biden has tried to like put back in. Okay, yes, the one good thing Trump did was to give her a TPP, but he did it for the wrong reasons because we could get a better deal. <laughs> but like. It, the TPP and the NAFTA things, it was all neoliberalist and all to benefit like American corporations were because uh, there's <laughs> always a free movement of capital while not free It always makes people. me think of uh, like, I I never will ever agree with Alex Jones. But when he says the globalists, I'm thinking like globalism is a problem in the way that it exploits mm -hmm. the cheapest possible labor and the, it exploits like resources from regions that it can get as cheap as possible, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because like it is as Karl Marx has like it laid out in the labor theory of value. The it, the most expensive thing in the pr production of capitalists and the means of production is labor. So if you reduce your labor costs as much as possible, then you can make the most profits. Right, right. They have they have they found, now they have done this before, uh, stamping down on strikes and stamping down on union work, and like they have dropped a bomb on like union strikers, like in Colorado, the National Guard did one time. They always and then Pinkerton's this work, but they have find it easier that like if they take the labor over to like. Like the poorer countries, such as say, like the third world countries, global south, or like imperialized countries, to say, then oh, uh, label striking, okay, death squads do your thing, and we've like also deposed like uh, socialist democratic like uh, leaders that like were in favor of like social programs and put in military dictatorships. Yeah. The whole term for a banana republic was because the 1954 Guatemala coup, which we backed to get for the United Fruit Company, now Chabata, to get cheap bananas. Yep. And Jake Bar was there and saw that, and that's why he's like, he went to Cuba and just like. Let's avoid that at all costs and not work with like these liberals. They are in America for sure. There's Lando William. Oh, I should have apologized for looking like Fidel Castro. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I don't think you have to apologize for that. <laughs> uh, okay, so Castro may, may not be the best person, but he's not the worst either. 
Well, that was, yeah, so Castro is complex, but like, it's for me, is like his authoritarianism, yeah. his clamp on and political dissonance. I have heard the argument that like him running Cuba and trying to protect Cuba from America, which is right across the pond, is, is, is something. And he chose to do a uh, crackdown on political dissonance from what I from what I understand. And I have my problem with that because like it, it, if the Bolsheviks never jailed anarchists or never had gulags, right. OK, then. And uh, I'll be singing a different tune about the USSR. If they still were starving people and like doing the genocide, that's I still have that tune that's worth. But the Bolshevists jailed an anarchists because of political distance, similar to what like Fidel Castro did. I understand he has his reasons, but like I can still uh, criticize that. Yeah. Still, Castro done good things, like the literacy program has been praised not only by Bernie Sanders but by Obama too. And Castro was an ally to Nelson Mandela. And Nelson Mandela said, no, Castro has been good to us. He's been supportive of us. Well, the United States were supportive of the apartheiders. Yeah. So it's for Del Castro's a complex person, but I do have a friend that like is half Cuban and have, from a Cuban family. And it, it, it doesn't like how like Fidel Castro is venerated by many leftists. And uh, I, it, since maybe it's a personal connection or a family connection, as it were, and they're Cuban. So, yeah, which I think I, I think I should like at least listen to them. Interesting. Yeah. They also have a problem with the venerization of Jacob Farr. I want to know about that. It, Jacob Farr, maybe because he murdered people. I just There's, want to know the context. I know of like the, uh, I, people who are LGBT. Uh, Q often uh, will have something to say against Che Guevara because he wasn't exactly uh, pro uh, LGBT, right? Like, right. I mean, and, that shows that like yeah. Che Guevara is complex. Yeah, yeah, it's like every every person from history is complex. There's good and bad, and hopefully we can take the good with avo- while avoiding the bad. If you know, maybe we can learn from them in some ways. <laughs> Right. And like, well, that's definitely bad leftist and leftist. That's like uh, things that like queer and trans issues is like a petite, petite bourgeoisie issue right. or just like our identity politics. And I'm like, please define identity politics and please know that being working class is an identity too. Yep. So if you can if you criticize me for playing identity politics, no, you are playing identity politics too. And, and, and I find it hard to accept that it's I quote unquote identity politics because – it's like people exist, right? Like, and they mm-hmm. exist as they are, and they should still have full access to rights and and you know well being, even mm-hmm. you know no matter what what their identity is. Like, I don't think that I, calling it identity politics is a valid reason for dismissing their concerns. Exactly, and that's that uh, ties in well into another thing or a bad tendency uh, amongst leftists, or definitely amongst bad leftists that they do this, and and it's usually is a white guy kind of thing <laughs> of talking over uh, POCs or like uh, Latinx people or trans people or like autistic people, and instead of like platforming them mm-hmm. as it were, so. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I have a lot of group of friends that are very critical of left Twitch as or some personal reasons too, but I won't go into there because that's what's just a lot of bullshit and we want to just forget about all that. But also how like on left Twitch, there was always like these big panels as it were. And it was like panels talk about trans issues with nine cis people and one trans person. Or what is pan-Africanism? Is it black supremacy with nine white people? And one black person. Right. And it's it, the debate people bros things. But again, it's like talking over uh, POC people and people of color, black people, indigenous people, Latinx people, instead of like actually listening to them yeah. about their experiences as were, which ties into like the people who think of class wars and only more proper uh, bros list of talking over women. But also this should we, so we got to look at our own biases, look at our own prejudices and bigotries as well. And that happens in the organizing too. Again, like in the mention on the YouTube, on the uh, left, left unity panel of the black rose federations, mm-hmm. they, there were a lot of people that had decided to left that organization and they were anarchists. They purport themselves to be anarchists and I can believe them that they think themselves as anarchists and purport that. But this, it was unfortunate for Black Rose Federation that like the actions of the leadership of that or the people that like were running it uh, seemed to like 
tokenizing their the people of color, the BIPOC people, yeah. and like their trans people. And that is something that we the leftists should also be vigilant in our spaces as were. Yep. As well as and this is something I have, I have heard that some trans people or some of our women and other people have like do not want to go to like certain like organizations as it were leftist organizations like IWW chapters or something like that or DSA chapters because of the people that are in leadership positions there get elected there because it's democratic it have a history of sexual misconduct as a word. And that's something that's yeah. maybe addressed yeah, as well. That, that's it's, definitely a problem, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. You don't want somebody in a position of like, I know anarchist organizations aren't supposed to have hierarchy, right? Yes, but exactly. you don't want somebody who's got clout within the group to be like uh, influencing other people if they have a history of sexual uh, misconduct. Right. Uh, so... Yeah, bad leftist is. Uh, um, that's another thing that's like it's probably going to be like constant discourse of what is bad leftist as work. Of course, uh, as, as I mean. It, uh, I mean, my friend recently, my friend Phoenix, uh, former guest of like the show Phoenix Rising, uh, it has like it was, uh, I'm it maybe so like she was just on the, no, they, I'm not apologist, hey. they were just lamenting of like uh, their situation, that they're struggling to like raise uh, their GoFundMe and stuff like that, and uh, yet, and, and they, they all they did is like mentioned that in like a thread about like Keffels. Uh, which yes, okay, is wrong for Kefels to be dogs and swatted, absolutely. But yet, the, apparently, she was also like advocating for others to be dogs and like swatted too. You just don't advocate for like someone like Jackass Karen Rollins to like die or be killed again. Back to like bad leftists, you can point out her transphobia all day, and yes, that is a problem, or point it out every yeah. new indication. But like wishing for someone to be dogs or swatted, says uh, again, like, bad leftists is more, but then. So Phoenix, that's all that they were doing, just lamenting their situation, and they got dogpiled by Kethel's stands. Oh, and, and and even some of them saying, why don't you just get a job if you have trouble with like, fundraising for your GoFundMe, which they had to me repeatedly say, I'm disabled, I can't work. That's why the GoFundMe, <laughs> and I'm not on disability because... I don't reason. actually have to justify my situation to you. Like, that's just yes. how it is. Like, <laughs> I am where I am, and it, a ver- various circumstances have left led me there. Mm-hmm. So it's like... <laughs> it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's absurd. It's, it, it, yeah, it's, please, people, it's like, kill your heroes. It's, August is apparently National Sandwich Month. Just remember, the only good hero is a sandwich. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's right. Um, a couple things that I, I, I've encountered quite mm-hmm. consistently actually is uh the idea that in a communist country it's okay to like criminalize drug use and i have serious problems with this uh we we it's like the same as right wingers like we know that that doesn't work that doesn't help anybody we know that that's just going to create ke- uh problems and the criminalization of sex work like Yes, like that's these. These are two things that I I will argue all day long with uh, mm-hmm. s- authoritarian leftists who dis who somehow have attached themselves to anti sex work and anti drug use uh, ideologies. And I'm not saying like everybody should be on drugs or doing sex work. I'm not, and nobody oh, yeah. should ever be forced into these things. But right. to turn them into criminals if they are doing it is just flat out backwards. Right. And this, which is also why I'm for decriminalization, uh, both any and all drugs, honestly, yeah. because like it's only hurting themselves. I really wish that they would, but I think, and also is honestly signs of bigger issues as were as often addiction is. Why would they like go so far as to like a, they sniff the fermented like air from their, from poop, which nope, it's the thing that's not like happening in places or do crack or cocaine as it were. It's probably something like is definitely better psychologically yeah. or they're bored or like the alienation from like capitalism and, and that sort of thing so this it's a sign of a greater problem as opposed to just like that yeah. and if they just like they like occasionally have like a uh, smoke some weed like on a weekend to relax or if there if it does actually somehow help them for like their situations even though it's like i'm 
there needs to be more science done on like the medical purposes or medical benefits of the cannabis. I can't believe that they are, uh, but yet I'm not going to say that's like it should be good for all things because it doesn't really work for everyone. It works <laughs> Nothing for, works it for works everything. For, it works, yeah. it, it definitely works for some people, yeah. but that's why this should be decriminalized, not necessarily legalized, because the state gets involved well, with its and that's, that's something we're seeing in Canada is that like it's legalized, it's licensed shops now. You can only distribute it in certain ways. You can't actually purchase more than 30 grams and one shot without it raising a red flag on their computers and saying, hey, no, you can't buy that much. <laughs> so... There's, there's, there's stuff going on there now that there's like, it's part of the state apparatus to regulate and control. And, and which is why many sex workers have also have like said like, listen, no, we want decriminalization, yeah. the New Zealand model. We do not want the legalization of like the uh, democratic, uh, the Nordic model right. of the wars with like, it's only the uh, crime for the Johnny or something like that, but not necessarily the Sue. Yeah, which or, does, I, it doesn't really work either. Like... <laughs> Yeah. No. Is and it's just like so. That's why full decriminalization. Just like don't not make it underground. And again, if you're talking about like human trafficking or the children going to these businesses or like uh, it, and there's legitimate problems Which, about pimps and, yeah. and domestic violence as it were. But like, don't decriminalize it. So then they will not feel like they were going to go to jail if they report that I'm a, I'm a full service sex worker, right. which is the term, not as a prostitute or whore, unless they call themselves that. Uh, but that's up to them. And yep. is, I've been, yeah, I've been beaten up by my pen. Oh, but you're a full service sex worker. Sex worker is illegal. And so, yeah, so that's why decriminalize it. They can come forward. And also all the other illegal activity that happens will go away because it's not the problem of sex work to do it. And my camera gone now again. <laughs> Well, that's okay. We're up on our, our hour here. So if you want to, uh, uh, maybe we can say, let people know where to get your f- content and uh, then we'll call her yes. a night. As, as just like, just one quick recommendation, definitely speaking of like listening to like uh, marginalized people yep. uh, still, I mentioned this last time, but they still a great organization, the and the Indigenous Anarchist Federation. Just look up the Indigenous Anarchist Federation. They've got a lot of good resources there. But also the Black Socialists in America. I love how to say in America instead of of America. Right. Because yeah. America's occupying forces were. But not only do they have like great explanation of what is due power and what is that sort of thing, but also a massive resource list of like so many different things. So if you want like a free PDF of like many different things, not only if like Karl Marx works or Engels works, but some of the Cunas and Kurt Popkins, and even some like essays from like, you, I did not know that Albert Einstein was a socialist or advocate for that, but also some good like feminist stuff like Bill Hooks and so like. So Black Socialists in America, I think nice. they're. Or website is dot org, and like I said, it's going down dot org. Great uh, media organization, Autonomous Collective is worth. And for me, I'm Summer a Geek, Summer a Geek on YouTube, Summer a Geek on Twitch. Uh, it's been over two months uh, last stream on Twitch. So, but hey, I finally published a recent YouTube video. So yay, check that out. Of course, Summer a Geek on Twitter, uh, where I occasionally tweet things, and like I'm also the curator of a uh, just a simple Google Doc full of like the different like links to like various people like Two Phoenix and like to Joanna and like Lynn Gwynn and Naz. Uh, CharityLinks.page, just CharityLinks.page. You'd be able to find it. I match it as well as my friend Jamie J and just a bunch of like different, usually queer people, trans people, disabled people, like sharing around their Vimeo links, cash apps and PayPal's nice. and like a go these for like various different or is it first different needs so and and that's it so thank you so much for inviting me back on that Corey. we should do this again as well absolutely thanks for coming mm-hmm. that's all folks thanks for watching or listening remember to share this show with your friends or on the social media site that you use the most thank you to everyone who supports the show on patreon it's really appreciated and it helps me spend more time on this and my other projects if you want to contribute, you can do that at patreon.com slash skeptical leftist, or you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash skeptical lefty. If you can't contribute financially, then a five-star rating or a re- and a review on the podcast app of your choice or on one of the podcast review sites like Podchaser or ratemypodcast.com would be great. If you want to find more from me, make sure to check out the show notes or check out my link tree. That's linktr.ee slash skepticalcorey. 
You can find all my social media stuff there, as well as links to my other show, From Many People's Strength, which is a podcast about Saskatchewan politics, and a project I'm involved in with my friend Damien Marie at Hope that's called Atheist, Humanist, Leftist Revolutionaries. My Twitter is at Skeptical Lefty, and my Facebook page is The Mind of a Skeptical Leftist. You can email me at mindofaskepticalleftist at gmail.com. And if you want to be a guest on the show or know someone I should reach out to, then feel free to let me know. You can book interviews in my available time slots on my Calendly, which is also found in my link tree. Thanks so much for listening, and let's try to make sure we're applying critical thinking and reasoned skepticism when we're attacking the system. If we get caught up in bad thinking, we can derail ourselves. <laughs>